Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Uh, finally, I'm back out of the woods and uh, starting to work on multiple other equipments. And this Nakamichi NR100 Dolby C unit has been sent to me uh, to take a look because it didn't work. Uh, then I, it was recapped and it didn't help. It works like for a couple seconds and then like dies. I will take a look and try to see if I can recover it and make it work. All right, so now I will open it. Uh, I will supply power. We will connect uh, cables to the oscilloscope and generator to see uh, what is going on, where the signal gets lost. And let's go from there. See you in a moment. Okay, here I'm opening the unit. And as you may see, it's been already recapped with Vima, with uh, solid polymer caps for power supply. And I believe this light blue is Nishikon and dark blue. I'm not sure what those dark blue are, but still looks, looks pretty new. Capacitors, it's maybe Rubicon or something like that. Like that. All right, so I check it up the board. Some traces were cut, but restore it. I don't see any big issues. So what I will do next, I will connect wires to the power supply. We'll use my power source to provide 10 volts of DC. And then I will connect it to oscilloscope and generator. We'll run 400 gears and we'll see how signal goes through the uh, microchips and like when it goes back and where it gets lost all right so see you in a moment okay everyone i just connected encoder as you may see i'm providing 10 volts and this device uses 80 milliampere so you may calculate how much it consumes and encoder works pretty fine so i supply in one volt on the input and I have 1.03 volts on the output. Both channels are fine. So you may see, I can see both channels. I can run a frequency sweep test. All right, let me do this. I will go from 100 gears to 20 kilogears on uh, 20 seconds direction rise and fall linear Hi, right, on It's kind of minus 10 dB level now. It has a little drop close to 20 kilogears. And as you may see, even more. Wow. So that's encoder part. And it looks like it works. Let me see, we go down. And that's the level I'm observe. Okay. 400 gears, it's about uh, minus 8, minus 7 decibel. 5 kilogears, you see it's drop by 3 decibel. 10, 11, 13. Like what I don't like pretty much that it's, it gets like triangle shaped when it gets higher frequencies. It's not the same as sinusoidal. Yeah, you see right here, it looks like triangle. So that means that means there will be distortion, but at least it's work, right? Next, I will connect decoder part and let's see how it will perform. See you in a moment. Okay, guys, I'm connected decoder part and that is not what works well. Right channel doesn't work for me. All right, and left channel that's a signal shape. I believe that's due to amplitude, so we can. 
we can try to reduce amplitude a bit. All right, let's do half a volt and see how it will perform now. But right, right channel is dead. All right. All right, and decoder rises at high frequencies. The higher we go, the bigger is rise. I would expect it would work in opposite direction. So decoder should lower and decoder rise, but I'm again like you see the higher frequency is so 20 kilogears, it gets like plus 10 decibel. All right. At least left channel works. I need to find what's wrong with the right channel. And then we will do tests with cassette deck and let's see how it will perform. See you. Okay everyone. Uh, first of all, I tested channels and found that decoder is these two modules right here, right? And it stays on diagram. Technically, you may see encoder left, right, goes from the connector side, right? Left, right. And then decoder left, right, goes left, right. And I was able to see, so there are input and output joints that we have input, we have output, as we see. And here we have input and there is no output. So I started to trace from input. It goes to the left chip, right? And I started to see uh, it gets in and it gets out of it and goes to the second chip here. And it was in and out again, right? And then I, I flipped this uh, resistor and capacitor pair and I found that one of the traces is broken right here as you may see yourself, right? So this trace needs to be restored and this module will be fully working after that. And then we will test on cassette deck to see how everything perform. See you soon. All right, and now we has bo have both encoding and decoded parts working synchronously, as you may see, both left and right channel perform well. All right, so what decoder does, it rises high frequencies and encoder lowers high frequencies. I would bet it should work an opposite way because we need to record more high frequencies uh, and then play back less high frequencies when we work and operate with Dolby to make sure that it will perform well. So maybe that was the reason why it, it worked not as the customer expected. But uh, as you may see, both uh, inputs and outputs, like encoder and decoder, uh, work smooth now, both channels, right? So let's play with this tape recorder and see how it will perform. See you soon. Okay, everyone. I'm assembled the box and I built the connector. Luckily, I have a bunch of Nakamichi connectors. Uh, so I was able to build power supply. All right, so when both Dolby encoder and decoder works, it consumes 110 millivolts. So technically it's about 1.1 watt uh, from this box. Uh, I connected uh, encoder output to the decoder input right and here we have we feed in signal on the encoder input here on the first one and we connected loop from the output to the input here and from this output we connected to oscilloscope and as you may see from 100 gears to 20 kilogertz level don't change and that's what we want to have that's exactly how Dolby C should work when all frequencies are encoded and decoded uh, in a proper way, and there is no change on the level. And we may check it right here. So it's now 100 gears, two kilogertz, four, 7.6, it's working. Pretty bare minimum, 15 kilogears, 18, like half decibel fluctuation on left channel around like 18 to 20 kilogears. That's it.
All right, pretty, pretty good results. That's what we like to see from the fully functioning box. All right. And here is both channels, you see. I changed it uh, amplitude for the right and it's seen, still seen. They are pretty in sync, same levels, no issues at all. And now you see left channel was a little bit bigger than a little bit smaller, around 20 kilohertz. I, I, we may adjust and go to 30 kilohertz. Let's see how it will perform. It's going down 12, 6. Let's see, now it goes up to 5, 7, 6. 10, 13, 16, 19, 21, 25, 30. No change. Okay, how high it will go? Let's go to 40. Or like that, to 50. All right, let's see. I will tell you when there will be dropped by one decibel. Seven, twelve, sixteen, twenty-one, twenty-six, thirty, thirty-nine. About about thirty-nine right channel minus one left keeps. <laughs> All right, so uh, we have minus one decibel on left channel above uh, 39 kilohertz, all right? But it's, it's keep with this minus one decibel. All right, I believe this box works fine. No issues at all now. And uh, I I think, let me think what deck we might test it. I'm still like not sure I would be able like to to hear the output because like we need to hear the output from the after decoder and like I need to think if I have anything like to to listen to music because I don't have uh, 700 or 1000 Excel boxes with me to test it properly. All right, but um, I'm I'm hundred percent sure that results are good. Box work. Perfectly well, no issues at all now. Thank you. See you in my next videos and bye bye.